hopefully that this time will go uh, be beneficial to you because uh, we're trying to make sure that all these moving parts that are the world of assessment actually um, are in a, in a place where you understand them. And if you don't understand them, you know how to get answers for them. So I'm going to start with the, uh, yeah, hang on just a second, the slideshow. So, okay, so we're gonna get going today. And uh, um, if you have questions, please pop them in the chat. We'll make sure that if um, uh, we're able to, we'll stop. And uh, if it makes sense to stop right in the middle. So uh, Sarah and Jamie, if you could kind of monitor the chat, uh, that would be great. And if it's appropriate to stop me right there, please jump in. All right, so today we're going to spend a little bit of time just again reconnecting, uh, making sure we're now getting further into the assessment season where things happen uh, quite quickly. Uh, so once again, one of the purposes of us being here is to make sure that if there are questions out there or if we have ideas, things that work really well, that we have a chance to share those with each other. Uh, we'll also link you with, the again, the office hours that we have every Monday. And we're going to be talking specifically today just briefly about uh, access testing and preparation. Um, I met with the uh, uh, most of the, I believe, the uh, BRTs and uh, ESL staff uh, yesterday. Thank you, Ben, very much. I appreciate the opportunity to do that. And we kind of went into depth about access, but if you uh, weren't there or would like to connect with me about that, um, I would be happy to do that. So we're going to get started on access today. We'll go much more in depth next month. We'll bring you up to date on the climate survey, uh, which is still in, uh, in operation, still being administered. We'll talk about Apple, which is for grade five DLI classrooms, and the Naglieri, which is for grade two classrooms. Then finally, we'll take a look out on the horizon, what's coming down the road and seeing where things are going. Things kind of give you a sense of time, what's happening. And so you are well aware of things. If you have questions, you have concerns, things come up, please let us know. All right, again, the folks that are supporting you, we wanna make sure that you know who, who we are. Uh, the assessment team has grown this year. And again, we welcome Jamie Anderson uh, because we have a lot of stuff on our plates. So it's myself and Sarah Walner. Jamie Anderson is joining the team. Uh, in student services, Stacy Will, appreciate your help and support. Um, ben Kolosh in multilingual programs. I Again, uh, we've worked together for a number of years and continue to appreciate everything that you bring to the table as well. The uh, local improvement team is uh, made up of Lindsay Mitchell, also referred to as Lindsay Malio, uh, Lauren Lauder, and John Rebolzi. John is online, I saw him. Thanks, John, I appreciate you guys being there. And Gabby, I appreciate you as well, making sure that you're here representing c and I in the, uh, uh, the conversation. So, all right, let's just touch base once again on the resources that are available to you. Uh, we have a website that we try and, and work hard to keep up to date and has both a staff side and a family side. It's at the shortcut would be mmsd.org slash assessment. So that's a quick way of getting you there. As we get further into the assessment season, those how to documents will definitely be more uh, probably welcomed. Uh, we'll start with uh, the Apple and with the Naglieri, there will be several of those uh, how-to documents available and then moving into access as well. All of that will be on the staff side of the assessment website. Also there, you will find the assessment coordinator page, which has the recording of today, as well as the slide deck and the agenda uh, that is on in not only there, but it is also in uh, the invitation to you. Quick uh, reminder, if you have technical questions, I, uh, Incident IQ is a great place for that. But if you've got content questions, 
Um, especially we'll, as we get rolling into the uh, access season, WIDA Screener at goes to myself, Sarah, and Ben. And we're usually able to answer your questions or we know who knows the answer. Also, out on the horizon is winter screening um, with FastBridge. If there's ever any questions, by sending an email to fast at, you connect with all of these folks that are listed there. And again, uh, we have both the technical and the uh, uh, reporting side of people available there. So you can certainly um, get involved in, in a correct answer from that group. All right, finally, every Monday, we have a new link. Every Monday from two to three, we uh, are just waiting for you to come and visit us in office hours. So we're there. If you have questions, there's again, if not everybody in the team is there, we're always available by chat for our teammates and we, uh, we can jump in at any time. So office hours every Monday, uh, 2 to 3 p.m. Okay, let's dig in um, uh, to access and we're just talking about uh, some things that are in the distance, but that will suddenly appear uh, and we'll go, how did that happen? So a couple things. First of all, uh, access for ELLs is the assessment that is given to determine English proficiency. Um, and English proficiency for en English learners is a really important concept as they move through uh, years in school. And so this is the test, an annual test that kind of measures their progress towards becoming proficient in English. It also allows us to, at a certain point, when they reach a certain score, they're able to actually um, be exited from the, de the determination called English uh, language learners. So in order to give this test and to ensure that the responses are are the same across the district as well as across the state. It's really important that we have professional development for the access test. So if you are brand new um, or if you're not, everyone needs to be certified or recertified in the training that goes with the uh, access test. If you've never given access, never done any of the professional development, please email us at wedascreener at madison.k12.wi.us and we will get you registered on the WIDA website. WIDA is actually a, an organization that's associated with the University of Wisconsin. Um, its email address is wida.wisc.edu um, and we'll get you logged in there. So that's what houses the professional development side. The other side of it once you completed the modules, and uh, and I didn't actually finish this slide, I apologize. Uh, once you complete the modules, are certified, then you will be accessing something called uh, DRC AMS, the um, administration um, software side of, of access. And we'll be spending more time on this next week. So there's two parts, but the first part is to get professional development and get that certification done. Just to give you a sense of time, where things are, are at with this, um, I'll be mailing this out to everyone uh, that uh, we connected with yesterday as well, because this is new information. We will be given, giving you access to this AMS software on the 27th of, of October. So right towards the end of the month. So if you are, um, if you got a chance to get that, that uh, certification done, um, that would be great. Um, but especially not, it doesn't have to be done by the 27th, especially it needs to be done prior to the start of the, the testing window. So students are already put into the AMS by DPI. The information is already there. Uh, we're going to pull the student information about accommodations from OASIS on or about Wednesday the 25th. So you'll have access on Friday the 27th, Wednesday the 25th or so, that information will be pulled. Now, as a, an access coordinator, you will get a list 
of those students who are expected to test, as well as those who have accommodations um, based on what is in OASIS. The reason you get this, and we'll explain more next, uh, next meeting, but by that time, hopefully we'll have this taken care of. The reason is not so that you have to go through the list of every single student and say, do they have this accommodation? We're pulling that from OASIS. The thing that we want you to stand to look for and, and will be highlighted is students who have open IEPs. So an open IEP does not, when it's in OASIS, does not have the accommodations there. So if a student has an open IEP, we need to know what the accommodations are as soon as possible so we can get that into the AMS system. All of that happens behind the scenes. So you'll get those rosters by Friday the 27th. Please review those with your uh, CC teachers, with the case managers, so that everybody can say, yes, this is correct, no, it's not, or here's the change that we need to make. Those will need to be reviewed by the 11th of, excuse me, the 11th, the 8th of November. So I believe that's a Wednesday. Uh, we need to get those so that we can make now manually upload all of that information into AMS and make sure that all the students have the accommodations that they need. Why do we do that? Because once we can get that into the system, then student tickets will be ready, can be printed with all this information. So you will get uh, the tickets during the week after Thanksgiving break. Um, and any of the physical materials that are associated with the testing, especially uh, younger grades, will be available to schools on or about the end of the month, the 30th of November. That will be coming to the district from, from the vendor, DRC, and then we'll be shipping it out to you. The test window itself opens on Monday, the 4th of, of December. And so that's uh, when this all begins. And as I um, always tell people, start planning to do a big push in those very, very early days uh, and weeks prior to winter break, because the more students you can get done, the better off you're going to be and the easier it is at the end of the window, which is the end of January the 26th. We'll get more information about some specifics, but I wanted to make sure that you at least heard this information about when you're getting access, when you'll get this document to review for accommodations, and, and when you should expect materials. We'll have our meeting once more before, uh, before the materials go out to schools. And um, just again, a reminder, this is going to be the, I, I, I want to just, I can't help but reiterate this because we always end up with um, concerns about uh, the, the Chromebooks that students use when suddenly it doesn't seem to be working uh, or you get an error message. That's often because the Chromebooks have not been restarted. They need to be restarted at the beginning of, of every, every week it would be a great thing. But what happens is with a Chromebook, Chromebooks update their operating system at the restart. Now, tech services we work closely with, they have it set up so that Chromebooks should restart every Monday and check for a new version of op the operating system. But it's often better, just, just kind of safe to uh, uh, you know, an added level of security for you and knowing this, if you just have students press the power button and restart the Chromebook when they get this prior to testing. Uh, so the current operating system of Chrome is Chrome operating system. Chrome OS is 114 and higher. And those are the ones that, that need to be in place. It might even be at, already at 118. So the Chrome operating system is something that updates very regularly. So please make sure that you have your students update their Chromebooks. Okay. Uh, hey, Tim, before we'll, we move out of, climb, or yeah. out of access, can I add one more thing? Please. Um, I just wanted to uh, refer everyone to 
in case you weren't part of the job like training yesterday and you're going to be working with access, I also wanted to just draw your attention to um, a document that we've created that is basically a walkthrough of what training needs to be completed before the test begins. Um, I'm going to pop it in the chat. It's also linked in the meeting agenda. It's just a one pager that kind of tells you which modules, uh, where to find the modules, and then which modules are required for um, administration. Thank you, Sarah, and I apologize. That's what I was going to put into the uh, the, the slide that, <laughs> that I didn't complete. So yes, the uh, the course that you would take on the WIDA website has five modules. Mm -hmm. You do not need to take all five of those modules. In fact, modules one, three and four are the ones we recommend because they are directly uh, aligned with what you need to know in order to administer access. Um, then there is a certification quiz, which you need to get eight out of 10 uh, answers correct. And you can take the quiz as many times as you need. You can go back to the modules. Each of the modules is about 15 minutes long. So. Thank you, Sarah. I appreciate you uh, jumping in with that. And again, I apologize that I didn't put that in the slide. Okay. No worries. Thank you for doing that. Sure. Okay. Um, like I said, we'll get much more in depth on the access assessment next month uh, when we meet. And so right now I'd like to move into a couple of the things that are coming up um, or that are currently in the field. Climate survey. Uh, currently is in the field, then the window closes on the 3rd of November. So that's coming up. That'll be a Friday. Uh, please, please, please give your students an opportunity. If you haven't already done so, give your students an opportunity to, to take the climate survey. Um, it's, it's important uh, not only for the district, but also for your school, as it is one of those, those pieces of data that is often used for the school improvement plan or SIP. Um, it is a really good way of kind of, of get, gauging where students are at. There's also a staff version. Um, there will be a family version in the spring. So we will do this once again in the spring. So kind of a beginning of the year, end of year, where are we at? How is everybody doing? How are we feeling? Uh, completion rates are calculated every morning at about 9 a.m. And once a week, uh, those completion rates are mailed out to principals. So if you haven't gotten a uh, completion rate from your principal, please let me know. Um, I can forward you the Google Doc, that uh, Google Sheet that these are in for your school. So I just need to make sure I get that to you um, via a link. The survey was delivered to all students via their MMSD email. Um, if a student did not get that, you can look in spam. It shouldn't be there, uh, but if it is, you can certainly get that. Uh, we have a, a small number of surveys that got uh, bounced back or just were undeliverable. So if a student doesn't have any, please let us know and we'll make sure that they get that opportunity because it's that important that everyone has that chance. Okay. We're going to move into something that is specifically for the uh, those schools that are dual language immersion or DBE. Um, and we're going to be talking about, and that would be for Spanish. Uh, we're gonna be talking about the Apple assessment. Now, we've been talking briefly about the access assessment, which will be taking place in December. What that measures is, again, English proficiency. How well am I as a learner learning the language of English? DLI classrooms, dual language immersion classrooms, however, are students are learning both languages, Spanish and English. And so we need to have some kind of assessment that is, is set up so that we know the proficiency in Spanish of all learners. Not only those who are, their English is their first language, but also those that are Spanish as their first language. And so the Apple assessment does that. We're gonna be taking a look at, the, at just one of the portions of the test, and it is going to be approximately uh, 40, 
40 minutes or so uh, to give this assessment. Students will need a ticket. We're setting it up so that there will be a class link icon in the assessment folder, and, uh, and it will take them to the test page. The tickets themselves will have a username and a password on them. And so we're not able to get all of that information into class link. So they will take them to the, the login page. They just enter that information and then they can begin testing. It has been a while since we've done this, especially at fifth grade. Um, the students will be taking only one of the four domains that is given by the Apple, similar to the, the Access has four different domains. We're gonna be taking the interpretive listening and speaking test. They will be using something called Form A, which for a fifth grader is appropriate. Um, and uh, they will need to have their Chromebook and headsets. So here's part of the process of getting ready for, for access. One of the things that everybody will need will be to have headsets, not just headphones, but also the ones with the microphone, so headsets. Uh, those that are dual language immersion programs, um, you will be using them sooner rather than later. So it's a good time to start checking to see, uh, digging those out, seeing where those are at, and making sure that you have enough to do that. You don't need a, quite as many for the access test as you would for Apple, because in Apple, everyone who's testing is going to be wearing them and they're going to be testing at similar time. Whereas access, you only have a small number of students actually doing the speaking portion at once. So uh, again, preparing for the Apple, it's ensuring that Chromebooks are up to date. And we've talked about that. Uh, one of the things, again, this goes for both the access test as well as the Apple. Students should always check the volume on their Chromebooks prior to plugging in any kind of headset. Because once that's in, there's no way, and again, before they log into the software, uh, the, the headset, once it's in, you could still change the volume. But once you're in the software, you can't get out without, without qu kind of quitting out um, and then restarting it. So make sure you check the volume before you log in. Um, and one of the things that, that we learned from the past is that we wanna make sure that staff um, who are associated with dual language immersion classrooms have access to the, the student data and scores immediately. So we're going to be sending out several pieces of information. Um, one will be some how-tos to make sure everybody understands how to do the Apple assessment. Uh, there will be a preview of that, so you'll be able to kind of see what this was all about. There will be how-tos uh, how -tos as far as getting data from the site. So uh, those you can expect in the next week, and those will be sent to coordinators at um, dual, language, dual language immersion schools in fifth grade. Uh, so the window for that is coming up pretty quickly. It's October 30th through November 17th. Um, again, this is an assessment that we ourselves are in control of versus access, which is an assessment that the state sets the window for it. So uh, I, while I don't like to go any further than the window, I understand that there are certain circumstances. So please make sure you talk to me if there is a need to extend any kind of a window. So that's the Apple assessment. Be on the lookout for more information if you are a dual language immersion school. So that piece was for only some of our friends, uh, some of our schools, but this piece is for all of our schools. So the Naglieri General Abilities Test, or the, what's called the Naglieri Nonverbal Abilities Test, the NNAT-4, is going to be um, uh, debuted uh, shortly. We have done the NNAT-3, so we have a new version of this assessment and a new vendor. Our, um, our team of folks in uh, advanced learning are going to be leading this as they have in the past. And so they will be working and reaching out to, to you 
um, possibly, possibly you, but most definitely to your second grade staff members to start working on a schedule. The, just so you know, the Naglieri or NAT4 is, uh, we're doing the nonverbal uh, version of this for all students. And it simply is, is a series of puzzles like this. It's almost, um, you know, what is the missing piece? And students simply have to, to click on the image uh, of what would go in that box. Likewise, here's another example of what would be the next thing in the series. The window for this is also the same as for the, the Apple assessment. Uh, again, we're talking about two different grades, and I apologize for those schools who are going to be doing both assessments. Keep in mind that the advanced learning team is going to be taking the lead on the Naglieri. Students will not need any headphones or anything, except that it might be a good thing for decreasing the classroom noise and allowing them to focus. There's no speaking portion of the test. There's not anything that's online and speaks to the students. Uh, there are accommodations that are, are available. Uh, we're working with student services to make sure that any of our second graders who have IEPs, everything is appropriate. There are only a couple different accommodations that are allowable on this particular one, but because it is not language-based, um, our students who, are, who speak another language other than English should be able to participate fully in this particular um, assessment. Data from that, by the way, will be back um, and shared with schools and with families in December prior to, uh, to winter break. All right, so what's out on the horizon? What are we looking at in the, the while it's the future, it's not too far out there. So next month at our meeting, uh, which I believe is um, the 14th of November, we are at 2.30 again. Uh, on the 14th of November, we're really going to focus and spend most of our time on access. It'll, we'll talk about scheduling. We'll talk about some of the details as far as administration is going, uh, where, how to get materials online, how, what to expect that will be coming in. We'll talk about tickets. We'll talk about everything that needs to, you need to know about access um, for that particular window. Also on the horizon is the mid-year screening. Um, again, FastBridge coming up. That will be in uh, January, uh, I believe. Yes, uh, actually December, middle of December through the close to the end of January. So it is optional, although it might be a good thing to, uh, we'll talk about that a little bit at our November meeting as well. All right, I think we're just about done here. No, we're not. Now, I had a reminder about this last uh, last month, but now we're getting into the assessment season where we do have people who decide that they do not want their student to take the test. So our board policy allows for families to opt their child out of assessments. Uh, the access test is a really special case. It is not something that you can literally opt out of by writing a note saying, I don't want my child in the test. However, families do that. I need to account for all students who are supposed to take the access test. And we'll talk more about this next month. Um, obviously students, we're not gonna force families to, to have their child take these tests. And I would much rather have them in school and not taking it because there's so much more of the day uh, that they need to be there for than just saying, oh, today's test day, we're not going to we're not going to have our child show up. So we'll talk specifics about the access test when we get to it next month. But we'll also be getting uh, families who choose to opt out of the forward test as we get closer and closer to that, which will be in March. All opt outs need to be in writing. Um, that means it could be a handwritten note, it could be an email, it could be a text. If it's an email, you need to forward that to myself and to Jamie Anderson. Also, um, if it's a, 
uh, handwritten note, if you could scan that and forward the scan to us. If you get a text and you are absolutely certain that this is the parents uh, because you work have worked with them and that's their way of communication, um, send me a screenshot and of, of that and tell me who the student is and who the, the family is. Um, again, I prefer not that, but I know that there are some families who that's your only way of communicating with them. So please know that I understand that. It's not my preferred version, but that's okay too. Uh, the reason why we do this is because I need to have a report that goes to the board and the board has to accept that every year. That is part of state statutes. So please keep that in mind. And if there are ever questions about uh, opting out, et cetera, please don't hesitate to ask uh, any of us on the assessment team. All right. Now we're going to just take some time for questions. Here are our email addresses. Um, I do want to give you my cell phone number and I'll do that as soon as I stop recording this because I strongly believe that you need to be able to get a hold of somebody in the midst of testing if something goes wrong because I've been there. I know that if you've got a room full of students and something's not working, that's a really uncomfortable place. So in a moment, I'll give you my cell phone number um, and that uh, we'll talk about that as well. So with that, I'm going to stop presenting and I'm going to stop recording.